Alright, so we're off and running. We're off and running from that simple idea of aside from the fact that Justin needs target practice. Is that <laughs> Is the fact that just because we can't see the particles doesn't mean they're not there. And, and gases are especially like that. Because the particles are so far apart from each other, they don't interact with light. And that's really how we investigate matter in a lot of ways. We use light to figure out what's there. And, and just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, what I want to do is kind of change the number of particles for you. I'm going to change the number of particles using a vacuum pump. So I got this canister, it's hooked up to a vacuum pump. Uh, that vacuum is going to allow the air particles to work their way out. And the balloon has particles in it that keep it inflated. Those particles can't leave when the vacuum pump's turned off. So what do you think is going to happen to the balloon if I take all the particles from the outside of the balloon away? I hear popping, a lot of popping. What do you think? It's going to, what, let's try it. So the balloon got bigger because the particles on the inside are still bouncing around, but there aren't as big particles on the outside pushing. So I'm going to let the air back in. And now I'm going to try it with a different material that has air in it. Of pressure on every square inch 
14 pounds, 14 pounds, 14 pounds, 14 pounds. You know, kind of ballparking it, we're talking about 2,500, 3,000 pounds. Alex, Gabriel, how do you feel about lifting 2,500, 3,000 pounds? You okay with that? Yeah. That's what you were trying to do. Okay, let me stop. Now, instead of changing those particles, we can change the energy that those particles have. And so I've got a balloon here. And it's not doing so well. But if I give it a little kinetic energy, Energy motion. Those so particles start going, zipping around. They cover more space, putting in a time, take up more volume, change the density so the balloon needs a little bit more energy. Oh, you know what it needs? It needs me to take the clip off the bottom. Carbon dioxide, but this plastic is full of carbon dioxide, and I can tell that 
because I can't get the candle to stay lit in the flask. I'll try that again here. Here goes the candle. It will not burn inside that flask. In fact, carbon dioxide is sufficiently dense, enough particles, enough mass per volume, I can actually pour the carbon dioxide right out. It's such a simple thing, but man, I like doing it. I'm happy to do it again. <laughs> now, I've got a tub here that I filled with carbon dioxide. I'm going to try blowing some bubbles of air into the tank. Get it to work again. Is it going to work forever? 
And eventually the tube's going to come to the same temperature with nitrogen. And it stops. Oh, I heard, what did I hear? Slam it on something. Slam it on something. That is what Justin was going to talk to you about. That was an excellent segue. Thank you very much. That means the transition from one thing to another.